Hey everyone, we'll begin in just a moment. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ISS Market Intelligence's 529 Enable webinar, Trends in the 529 Distribution and Analysis. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Some quick housekeeping items before we get started. Please feel free to use the chat to interact with either just our speakers or with the whole group throughout the presentation. We will also have time for Q&A throughout the webinar. And questions can be submitted at any time during the presentation via the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. A brief survey will appear on your screen after today's webinar, and we appreciate any feedback that you have for us. Today's webinar will also be recorded, and you will receive an email with a link to the replay and instructions for viewing on demand. I'll now turn it over to our presenters. Thank you so much, Tara, and welcome to the first quarter 2022 webinar and we'll be covering trends in 529 distribution and anal analytics by ISS Market Intelligence, sponsored by NASDAQ Fund Network. Devin? Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me here uh, today, Paul. I'm excited to talk all things uh, 529s in, in ABLE. Uh, my name is Devin McCarthy. I'm a managing director here at NASDAQ um, and run the business development and partnership efforts for, for the NASDAQ Fund Network. Um, for anyone who I've not met yet today um, or have not spoken to in the past, you may ask yourself, why, you know, how does NASDAQ fit into the 529 space? And I'll just quickly give you an overview of NASDAQ's different um, business units and how we kind of fit into NASDAQ. We've got, everyone knows the, the listings business at NASDAQ, the IPOs. Um, that's one of the businesses. I'm not a part of that business. We have our market technology business where we actually provide exchange technology to over 130 different global stock exchanges. That's our uh, market technology business. Uh, we also have our trading business where we work with uh, banks and brokers to get them to trade um, on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Uh, where the NASDAQ fund network fits in is into our fourth different business unit called investment intelligence. And that's where that's a business where we do index licensing, um, uh, license market data products. And we also have our investment business unit in there, our Dorsey Wright and Associates business in there. And that's also where our NASDAQ fund network business sits as well, too. So i um, looking forward to getting uh, started, Paul, and, and I'll, I'll pass it back over to you. Thank you so much, Devin. I'm uh, Paul Curley, CFA, Director of um, 529 Enable Research at, at ISS Market Intelligence, IRC Data Research Events and Digital. Anyone who's been to the 529 conference in the past knows that I, I run a, a tight ship. We start on time and we end on time. And I learned that uh, having worked as a custody fund account at Investors Bank and Trust, now State Street, where you had to hit the NASDAQ deadline on time every single time, 99.9% .9 of the time. So wait, welcome, Devin, and uh, look forward to learning more. Awesome. So jumping in the uh, webinar series, you know, you know, broadly speaking, our goal is to you know share and learn best practices, help support the 529 and able community, and also create the long-term growth opportunities for the industry by by keeping that momentum, having the conversation going. It's great to have this webinar series at you know during this 2020 to 2022 uh, you know time period. The photos on the right from from the event, which was which is great, and um, also good to see a lot of the, the folks in the industry on the the photos on the right. And, and as we're talking about the conference, uh, just quick save the date, 510 Conference 2022, September 12th to the 14th at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando. Uh, more information to come on 529conference.com. But um, as we do every single year, it's always great to talk about the essentials, which is our product training day, 510 Conference, and ABLE Summit. Today, we're going to be talking about the, um, you know, basically four, uh, four or five key topics. We're going to start out with 529 analytics update. You know, with with uh, Devin providing an overview with, with his um, with 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 his initiatives, all the great things that, that he's doing to help get that message out there, you know, build awareness, you know, build that transparency, and just do all these different things that 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 will help 
this um, you know, Fatian and Able industry to, to grow. But we'll, we'll pause there, take the questions, and then, then we'll you know take um, you know uh, fill out the, the rest of the, the day's agenda. We'll be taking live and questions and answers throughout. We're trying to keep a very good, engaging uh, environment. So with, with that, we, we look forward to um, today's session. And, and thank you so much for for joining us here today. And um, with that, we'll we'll go over to the first question. Um, uh, Tara, can you help kick off the attendee poll? And, and Devin, over to you. Yeah. So thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. So the first the first question that we're going to uh, that we're going to post here is just ultimately how familiar are you with um, the, with Nasdaq's 529 um, initiative uh, as it relates to the ticker level price transparency that we're providing to 529 state plans. I'll give you a couple of minutes, well, maybe not a couple of minutes to answer this question, um, but uh, we'll have the results come in here here shortly and, uh, and we'll get started. There we go. Very good. So it looks like um, most people are not familiar, but please explain more. And that's exactly why we're here today. So that's great. That, that kind of really sets the table and I'm happy to go ahead and kind of kick it off. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I'll talk a little bit um, more broadly about what the NASDAQ Fund Network is first uh, for everyone, just so you can have a better understanding. Um, and then over the course of the next five or 10 minutes or so, I'll kind of go into what we're doing for, for the 529 space specifically. But um, the NASDAQ Fund Network is really one of NASDAQ's longest standing products and services. It's been around uh, since the mid 1980s. Um, and it was originally born out of the necessity to be able to provide additional transparency to a very growing but opaque uh, mutual fund market um, back in back in the mid 1980s. So we established what was called the mutual fund quotation service, where we would work directly with um, where we would work directly with mutual fund issuers to register their mutual funds with a five character symbol and then publish that. Um, out at the time to the newspapers, if you remember that back in the day, um, and the bare bones data platforms, think about your Quotrons, um, et cetera. So, you know, I'm really kind of reaching back in time, but that was kind of the initial kind of introduction of the NASDAQ Fund Network. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. If I look at the NASDAQ Fund Network, and as I'm explaining it to anyone who may not know about it today, um, it's actually one of the most, um, uh, one of the most widely understood products that no one knows anything about. So 60% of you are looking to know some more information here. So there's really two different sides to the NASDAQ fund network. The first side of the network is, is, is NASDAQ working with asset managers, trust companies within the retirement services space, 529 state plans in the college savings space. We work directly with those firms um, and we register their products with searchable symbols um, on the NASDAQ fund network. Um, the second side of the service is we receive the net asset values from all of the custodians on a nightly basis. And we publish that market data out to um, the large institutional data vendors of the world, um, to public websites, to retail online brokers, banks, platforms. It's over, it's over 400 different platforms um, here in the United States that receive um, our data. Uh, if you go to the next slide, if you, if, and, and also if you just think about the different platforms that you're doing, you, you're looking up mutual funds today, for instance, right? You are, when you are looking up a mutual fund on that platform, that platform is a subscriber to the NASDAQ fund network. So um, you can kind of, you start to realize how, how large our distribution uh, really is. And so I've got two kids. And so I actually do a little bit better job of explaining sometimes with, with circles and squares. So um, here at the top, we have the 529 state plan that we, that we work with, right? And the state plan is gonna upload the, the fields that you see on the right side of the screen. So very, in, very fundamental um, uh, uh, points here. So um, they register that with the NASDAQ fund network. We assign a customized five character ticker symbol to that state plans share classes. 
And then, like I said earlier, we publish that downstream to the data vendors, public websites, retail online brokers, and all financial, financial uh, advisory platforms. You can go to the next slide. Devin, they're, they're not children, they're, they're 529 beneficiaries, but, but, but we do have a question coming in. Um, yeah, yeah. How do you handle um, uploading historical pricing? You kind of talked about the, you know, the day-to-day the -day pricing, which is what I, which is what I, I lived and breathed uh, yeah. you know, as, a, as a custom fund account every, every single day, reconciling the self, publishing um, the, the, the pricing. But yeah, if, if you could handle the, handle the question, how do you handle uploading historical pricing? If I'm in, interested in registering my state plan today, how, uh, but have years of historical pricing, how does NASDAQ handle that? Thank you. Great question. Uh, thanks, Paul. So uh, it's, it's, so if we started registering, um, you know, a state plan, you know, today on February 16th, likely that that's going to have inception date historical daily values going back years um, so we so we have a we have a way to handle that we we work directly with the custodian to get a uh, to get the historical um, prices going back to the inception date of the five of the share class itself so so um, so you're able to not only see you know today's price ticking forward we're also able to upload that that historically. Now, sometimes that can take a couple of different weeks as we work with the different vendors to make sure that they're uploading that. Um, so it's not an immediate process to get the historical data uploaded, but there's no additional fee to get the his the history uploaded. So uh, appreciate appreciate that that question. Um, and so in, in total, um, I think I also saw an additional question um, uh, in the chat uh, that came up, how many state plans are registered with us today? We're going to get into that, um, but you kind of front ran my question, so I'll, I'll just, I'll let you know now. We have a total of 12 different state plans that are registered with the NASDAQ Fund Network today across um, about 1,300 different share classes, so 1,300 different symbols, uh, providing transparency into the 529 space um, today. And so um, I think the last point I'll mention here before I kind of get into the success that we saw last year is, you know, um, as investors expectations, you know, continue to evolve with technology. Um, so does the ability to research and transact uh, 529s. And, you know, one such example of this that the 529 industry has been doing, uh, has been hard at work at over the course of the last several years, well before NASDAQ um, got involved, was, you know, with broker dealers looking to leverage more omnibus relationships, looking to make that experience more streamlined, workflow more stream streamlined. So ultimately, at the end of the day, what NASDAQ is trying to do here is to really to do our part by making 529 pricing more publicly available and ultimately on the same level playing field as other mutual funds, ETFs, and stocks, being that these are held uh, you know, by families saving for educational expenses, the retail investor, we believe in the partners that we work with today, they believe that it's important to have that investor level transparency into these, into these products. You can go to the next slide. So 2021 for, for, for the NASDAQ Fund Network was really a remarkable year for us. Uh, we doubled the state plans uh, that we had registered on the platform um, to a total now of 12 different state plans over 1,300 uh, plus 529 share classes, like I mentioned um, earlier. Um, and I, 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 you, you see here we have you know, Utah, Colorado, New Jersey, Connecticut, Wisconsin, and Ohio, all registered um, over the course of the last um, you know, 12, uh, well, 12, 13 months. And so um, on the right hand side of this of this page here, you'll see, you know, we have um, here's just kind of a, a map of kind of who, who's on the map, right? These are all the states that we're working with today, um, whether that's on the, the direct side or the advisor sold side of their business. But uh, all of these states are current customers of the NASDAQ Fund Network and many other of the states that are not on here today could very well be existing mutual fund customers of the NASDAQ fund network. And I mentioned that just to, just to say, just because a state isn't on here, that doesn't mean that they're not a potential NASDAQ fund network customer in some of the other asset classes that we serve, whether that's your traditional 40 act mutual funds, collective investment trusts, um, et cetera. You can go to the next slide. Sure, Devin. And, um, you know, as, as you kind of talk about cross 
you know, products. What what has been the historical audience, um, you know, for the, for the Nasdaq Fund Network? And, and to that extent, there's the question that came in. I, I can see why advisors sold market could benefit from having searchable symbols, you know, for five times. But what are the benefit for the um, direct sold plans uh, to have searchable symbols? You know, from my perspective, it's always great to get more awareness and understanding about. 529s and forms of college yeah. planning, but be great to get your perspective. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And um, and 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 that's a it's a great question. And I think that you know, for, from a direct sold perspective, um, first off, we were we were very happy to welcome um, my 529 uh, last year. I think that was in in April or May of last year. So um, they cer they certainly get it over there. So from from the perspective of a direct plan registering with us, you know, at the end of the day. The, the, it's the family saving for educational expenses that is that, that is um, you know the, the beneficiary downstream the investor right and so today if you're a direct sold plan and you're not registered with the Nasdaq Fund Network you have the you know you have the ability to be able to go on to your um, your state plan or the, the 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 yeah the state plan's website to be able to do you know behind a username and password to be able to do some some due diligence or to be able to see. Um, how your your investment is performing. Alternative, uh, alternatively, um, you may get a quarterly statement in the mail, um, you know, telling you how your investments are doing. But outside of that, there's really not a level of transparency that um, that direct sold families have into into their 529s. Um, you know, all the all the firms that you see listed on this on this on on this list here, whether it's on the left or the right side. All the investors, all the families and the retail investors that are invested in these 529s have the ability to be able to track their investments in a portfolio watch list, let's say on an E-Trade uh, platform or, or some type of self-directed platform. Let's say that I've got $50,000 know, in, in, the, in the equity markets or in the ET, within ETFs or other mutual funds. I happen to be in, invested in, in two different 529s um, for, for, for our children. For a firm that's registered with the NASDAQ Fund Network, me as an investor, I can actually track my 529s in my portfolio watch list. And that, that, that for me, it makes for a very kind of holistic experience. I'm able to see all of my kind of investments or net worth within one consolidated view with a direct sold plan that's not registered or even an advisor sold plan that's not registered, that experience um, from both an advisor perspective and a retail family saving for college is, is I would argue it's kind of a broken experience and, it, and there's room for improvement to make that experience uh, more transparent um, on behalf of that investor. So this is um, another way that we look to partner with um, with 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 our with our firms and also prospects as well too. So here, this is um, obviously there's probably a lot of familiar faces here for everyone that's watching. Um, there was a couple of different um, opportunities that we that we had last year. Uh, we we had a big push around College Savings Month. Um, last year, where we welcomed many of the participants that you see on the screen here, as well as many others to kind of go over, you know, the importance for saving for college, why, you know, diff different topics. And if I just um, kind of go through these real quick, you know, it was great to have Ron on last year talking about, um, you know, how 529 plans can help, you know, families reach their, 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 their savings goals. Uh, Richard was did a great job kind of discussing, you know, what's the difference between a direct sold plan and an advisor sold plan. Um, Paula did a great job just talking about tax free qualified withdrawals. Um, and then Jeff, we appreciated Jeff coming on board to discuss the questions that parents should be asking, um, you know, while saving for college. Uh, you know, uh, Tarun, uh, Peg, and, and Anthony as well too did a great job with us. I'm I'm not I'm not calling out everyone that we did it with last year. This the screen was only so so, so big, but um, this is just another way that we look to partner with our with our with our partners to be able to provide meaningful content for them to be able to educate their constituents, uh, whether those whether those constituents are the advisors they serve or whether those constituents are the are the family saving for educational expenses. So once we produce these videos, they, they, this, there's no cost for, you know, that these firms paid for this. This is just a part of a part of a uh, partnership or um, in some cases, you know, potential partnerships where we could be able to work with firms down the line. But the whole goal here is awareness, education um, and content. 
And then finally, I wanted to discuss um, at the, our 529 scorecard. So this was an extremely exciting and kind of rewarding um, experience for us here at NASDAQ over the course of the last couple of years. Um, at, to, uh, over the last couple of months, not years, I apologize. Um, so what we're doing here is we're looking um, at publicly available data um, that, that where there's nothing, when I say there's from a methodology perspective, we're just looking to be able to put 529s um, in a scorecard type of view. And we're looking at all of the different plans that are registered with NASDAQ um, today. We're looking at the top performing funds for each state plan that's registered on the NASDAQ fund network. And through the process over the course of the last couple of months, we've had some tremendous feedback from, from the industry around, you know, um, what does performance mean? What are you actually looking at? Can you give a little bit more information around what we're seeing here? And so we've worked, um, you know, very, 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 very hard with um, some key partners and some key um players in the state in, in the 529 space to really make sure that we're articulating what the scorecard means. So, um, and if there's questions, I welcome as many questions about the scorecard um, as, as you'd like with whether you want to have a discussion here or whether, you know, you'd like to have a discussion after this. We are completely open to industry feedback here and uh, we're excited to be able to interact and kind of have a dialogue around making this um, a valuable uh, piece for everyone. But what we're doing here with the Q4 2021 report card was we're looking at the first day of the quarter, which was October 1st. We're taking a snapshot of all the NAVs for all the plans that are registered with the NASDAQ Fund Network. So snapshot from October 1st, snapshot from December 31st, and we're just sorting on change in NAV. Um, we're not taking into consideration um, investment strategy, fees, holdings, expenses. We're not taking into um, consideration asset allocation. We are strictly looking at the net asset value over the course of the quarter. Um, and I'm trying to think. So, and, and I think the, the one other point is we've also discussed as we continue to grow um, the, 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 the customer base, we're happy to iterate on this. We've talked about potentially looking at this within different sleeves. So maybe looking at just, you know, majority of the assets within 529s, as we all know, kind of sit within the target date uh, suite. So maybe just looking at, at, at target date funds, or there's different ways that we could potentially slice and dice the data. And um, I'm looking very forward to being able to interact with, uh, with, with everyone to kind of be able to make sure that this is um, a meaningful and valuable uh, piece of information on a quarterly basis. Thank you, Devin, and much appreciated. Uh, first qu question came in, how do you quantify the value of having searchable symbols, you know, for five to nines, you know, just very top of mind, you, you know, we saw the, you know, as an industry, uh, North Carolina released an RFP for an investment manager. And in, yep. in order to provide a list of investment options that would be on the platform, that investment option had to, has to have be listed on the on NASDAQ as having a ticker or another exchange. So I, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, the states are already sort of implicitly, you know, bought in, but is there a way to quantify the value of having searchable symbols uh, for 529s? You know, it's it's a great question and one that I get asked like every single time that I'm introducing what we're doing here. Um, so I, I appreciate the question. As far as being able to quantify, I would love to be able to point to a data point that says, you know, from registering uh, on January 1st of 2020 and then taking a look back in 2021, the assets in all these 529s, you know, increased by X. Um, we don't actually have, you know, we don't, we, we cannot quantify how many times these, these ticker symbols are being um, um, requested or searched on, on all these you know, third-party platforms. So we don't have an ability to be able to really quantify that. But what I would say is, you know, from, from the perspective of the state plan um, in the 529 space, you know, being able to, have, especially a nationally sold plan, being able to have the ability to look up 529 pricing across a litany, hundreds, literally hundreds of platforms, um, providing that additional level of, you know, transparency and distribution on behalf of the families that you serve, um, it is, 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 a, is a good thing. Not only is it a good thing, but an informed investor is an embedded, better investor. 
could not agree more. You know, it's just, um, it, is this a real product? Like, well, I can find out on, on NASDAQ, you know, and it's, um, yeah. you know, so, so, so to that, yeah. that, that, that extent, it, it's a, you know, it's a self-confirming, um, you know, confidence, you know, builder for the, for the product. To that, well, and to that point, Paul, I mean, it, it's, it, you know, I can, there's, you know, there's a, an analogy on that as well too. We're, we're, we're doing this in the collective investment trust space as well too right now. And a lot of the partners that you see here are actually registering their CITs with us. And for anyone who follows the retirement services space, collective investment trust, traditionally very institutional grade product, but as, as assets are kind of going into different products, um, and, and kind of, you know, advisors are looking at other ways to be able to recommend products outside of, you know, your traditional 40 act mutual funds, CITs with ticker symbols really is a validation point as these products move from the institutional space into the advisor sold space. So just going back to what you said, it's really a validation point for 529s and you really want to put these on the same level playing field as ETF stocks and other mutual funds. I, I agreed. And, and from that perspective, I, I, I know I've been pinging you to, you know, pick up and, and cover Able as well. It's a, it's a great product. It's growing. It needs to you yep. know, get more awareness and understanding out in the in the space. We we did the, get a question around uh, Able plans. How does the cost structure compare to registering Able plans versus five two nine plans? Yeah, ha yeah, I'm happy to, uh, to 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 discuss that. So um, over the course of the last co uh, a couple of months, we 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 are at, we are actually have the ability now to be able to register uh, able funds um, on the Nasdaq Fund Network as well too, being able to provide that additional level of of transparency. And obviously, the able market um, is is not the size of the 529 market, and we would be absolutely willing to you know work on 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 pricing uh, as far as it relates to registering the able market. Um, and I welcome the chance to be able to have a ch uh, conversation with any of the whether whether you're an existing um, state plan on the platform or whether you're a new state plan that would like to have that conversation, uh, I'd, I'd welcome the chance to be able to discuss and to be able to uh, put ABLE um, on the map uh, in a very meaningful way. Sound, sounds good. Uh, just st taking a quick look, look at the clock, I, I, I figure perhaps I'll, I'll go through um, you know, my slides you know, during that time, Devin, if you want to um, take a look at the questions, write some notes, yeah. notes down. I mean, obviously, if, if we run out of time, we, we can, you, you will follow up, Devin, you know, with, with those. But towards the end, there's, there, we even have your phone number and your email right there. Um, but, in, in, and of course, you know, with, with any of these slides on, on industry updates, please, I, I'll take a pause. You can, you know, add, add on the uh, color commentary, you know, as, as well. Right. But in the meantime, we, we appreciate the uh, time and, and insight, Evan, and look forward Definitely. to more and engage more. Thank you so much. Awesome. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over to 529 and Able Industry updates. Uh, you know, broadly speaking, over the long term, we, we have seen the, the assets increase, you know, and, and just in very stead, steadily. This this update will focus more on the fourth quarter 2021, where I, I, um, accounts increased 1.8%. That, that's a great, um, robust, you know, growth from an accounts perspective. Uh, we've also seen assets increase, you know, 5%. And, and right now, as of the end of the 2021, 14.8 14 million accounts investing 400 and 52 billion in, in assets. So great momentum. And, and in terms of just looking at the picture in the background, 2008 was jarring when it was happening, but you know since then we've seen a, a great re rebound in assets uh, overall. You know, and, and, and when we look at that 5% increase in assets, and in terms of that attribution for that increase, 21% you know, uh, of that increase came from, from net flows, so, so money in, minus money out. So gross contributions minus gross distributions you know, from that for a net flows definition, and seventy nine percent coming from investment uh, performance. A lot of reasons for that for that gross contributions to, to come in in, in twenty twenty one. Whether we're talking about stimulus checks, uh, child tax credits, work from home, so low, lower expenses, the student loan moratorium, so there's there's less expenses going out at the door, and just you know tougher time to spend money with, with so many closings and not being able to go out to eat and so on and so forth. So so gross contributions were up in twenty twenty. One and, and families were, were putting their money to work. What we also saw a very interesting manner was the increase in, in distributions, but it was much more of a glided continuation of an increase in um, in distributions on a year over year over year basis. We do get the question of of was that increase in, in gross distributions from you know K through twelve apprenticeships and student loans, but or maybe that you know th this this. Um, you know, a, a potential for for you know people washing money into five nines and putting over to K through twelve, but we we really don't see from a from a pure data perspective that that 
being the, the cause of increase in distributions. Um, but you know that 2020 volatility that there really wasn't an increase in non-qualified distributions. We think that because it was a quick, you know, quick downturn and, and quick increase from a, a market, but also e economic perspective, that a lot of that that liquidity that was needed took place out of the 401k. Um, space from the CARES Act, providing a, a higher uh, buffer for, for liquidity events. One thing that, that is definitely a, a lesson that, that is learned is that, that the value of uh, automatic contributions, which continued pre-pandemic to, to currently. So great to see the automatic contributions. And of course, that's, a, that's an alpha to, to asset growth over, over the years. This, uh, this chart comes from our uh, uh, quarterly highlights. We produce it mostly for the media, but just thought to inclu include here today because I knew that there was a couple of people on that list that, that were interested in getting more color commentary. But you know, broadly speaking, the, the top uh, top ten plans, you know, for the five two nine savings industry accounts for fifty six point uh, fifty six point five percent of the assets. Um, that this is a table we have. It lists, lists the plans and. Um, Typically, ignites and, and other media publications, you know, cover that perspective. When we rotate over to the top five uh, program managers, top five accounts for seventy-one point two percent of the assets. It's a number that that we track. Sometimes it gets picked up uh, from a from a market data perspective, and and we'll continue to produce that on a quarterly basis as we have for um, you know close to ten years. But what's interesting for for this next slide is that that there's been what I call the sliding of the tiles, a lot of RFPs, RFIs, RFQs, broadly speaking, states are, are going out to market to, to uh, request bids for, for their different um, type of, of partnerships. But in um, you know th this month, as I kind of mentioned earlier, North Carolina released an RFP for investment manager and portfolio accounting um, with a due date of, of March 31st. And, in January, uh, Nevada released an RFQ for investment for investment advisor and primary distributor of its RA sold 529 plan. Cl clearly stated in the RFQ that NAS, um, that uh, SSGA will not be uh, rebidding for that plan. Um, so that'll be interesting to, to see how that one turns out. In December, Montana released an RFP for program manager of its direct sold plan. Do to, uh, do today, so they still got some hours. Uh, still some hours in the day to, to put together the uh, um, RFP for, for that one. Of course, it's it has uh, time time has come and gone, but but that one is 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 there, and, and we we should be hearing it at some point. The, the results from the Arizona RFP, uh, as that plan is was is scheduled to launch or in trans transition by March 2022, which is next next month. Also, we, we heard this quarter that Flywire has announced a partnership with the census to digitize 529 distributions. A lot more along the lines of that ease of ease of doing business for 529 plans. Um, less less uh, from an operational standpoint, um, less less physical activity, just a lot more um, uh, economies of scale. It's great to see you know Flywire announce that partnership with, with the census and, and look forward to learning more. We also had an update to our uh, Omnibus status board where Raymond James converted Fidelity's uh, chat advisor program to its uh, Omnibus platform. There's another couple uh, plans that Raymond James is, is working on and will be announcing live soon, but that is some updates. Also some, some program management change, changes in, in January th this year, iShares, um, 529 plan in Arkansas changed primary distributors from, from BlackRock to Census, and the plan was, was relatable to the Bright Writer Future Advisor plan. Also, it, for Arkansas, Arkansas, their direct sold plan was also relatable to the Arkansas Writer Future direct plan. Um, also, at the tail end of, of uh, in November 2021, we also heard an announcement around Vestbell acquiring uh, BNY Mellon Someday, and that transition has been complete. So, that BNY Mellon Someday. Uh, division uh, has been relabeled to Vestival State Savings. We've also seen the um, you know able able market grow very continuous. It's, it's great to see that the numbers increase. We we talked about able uh, briefly previously, but we the number the amount of assets has has broke the the billion dollar mark. So uh, um, which which is great news. So, so the assets you know keep increasing uh, quarter over quarter. Just got a quick uh, update from from um, someone about uh, hi hi Paul. The uh, Montana RFP response date was pushed out until uh, February twenty third. So so that's great. Th thank you thank you so much for that update. Much appreciated. 
So the, the assets have increased, um, I mean, sorry, the accounts increased 6.3% for, for ABLE accounts. And, and with the increase in accounts, that's driving assets increasing at 11.5%. Product is definitely in the, in the growth phase, which is great. The average account size also increased 4.9%. That, that uh, 90 300 um, average account balance is, is great, especially from a benchmarking perspective of in, in comparison to the uh, $2,000 threshold for, for different ways of, of benchmarking the activity. From a net flows perspective, 17.5% um, of accounts have automatic contributions, which as we said, it, uh, already said before, is a, is a great important marker for, for the growth of any product. And it's great to see Able having so many accounts with, with that automatic contributions. 1.5% of accounts are, are of, of um, of accounts um, ha are having their gross sales come in from the employer channel, which speaks to the importance of the able to work act, which is which provides incremental additional savings for those those working. Um, so it's so we see 1.5 percent of, of gross sales coming from the employer channel, um, which provides additional uh, indication of about the importance of the employer channel and able to work, and, and hopefully that that bill gets um, continued on. Um, right now, it's it's um, set for, for sunsetting in, in 2025, I believe. But there's also 16.4% of accounts taking distributions from ABLE accounts. Basically that, that cycle of growth is, is so critical in ABLE. Um, what's great to see for ABLE is that money's coming in, money is being saved and money is being used. So it's, it provides more certainty and confidence in ABLE. And I think that will, will create a longer term uh, growth opportunity for the industry. A couple of other updates in, in December, we saw that the Michigan change administrators for, for my ABLE from TSA consulting to a census government savings. We also saw Hawaii launch uh, a, a new program. Maine also launched with, with Bangor Savings Bank. In September, 2021, um, Utah launched a program as, as well. And um, great to have, have Devin provide uh, his commentary on uncovering ABLE products and, and the future and going forward as, as well. A couple of quick updates on the, on the legislative front. The ABLE Age Adjustment Act continues to be in focus. Um, there's the update for the two bills. For the Senate Bill 331, one sponsor and 12 co-sponsors, and for the House um, House Bill 1219, one sponsor and 75 co-sponsors. So we, we really think that as part of uh, Secure Act 2.0, um, in, in the near future, hopefully that Able Age Adjustment Act is, is able to be passed. That Delaware House Bill uh, 145, we've heard that um, um, per, per a call yesterday that there's um, that Delaware may be getting a uh, state tax deduction on able contributions in, in, the, in the near future, more to come and more to get announced. But it just shows that that able has launched, is growing, is grow, it, it is being used from contributions, uh, savings, distribution perspective, and there's additional legislative momentum helping it, it to grow. And of course, for Devin, it'll help uh, it, his team will help able to. Uh, grow even further. And for us, we've been uh, covering more the state facilitated retirement uh, products. Uh, we're, we're looking at launch coverage of, of these products in 2022. We've had a number of calls. This is the list of, of current live programs with California, Connecticut, Illinois, Oregon, Massachusetts, and Washington. Of course, there's slightly different variations for, uh, between the first four and the last three, but we're, we're looking at learn more, please have a, a call with me. We've been having a number of calls to, to learn more about the space. And of course, I'll, I'll thank um, AKF Consulting and Andrew Fierstein to help me even verify th this, this table and to um, make sure we're, we're, we have the, the right set of, of current um, live programs there. But, and of course, the AKF Consulting, they released a, a um, couple white papers, couple blogs. And so we've been reading about that one there. Um, two updates on RFPs. Um, so Virginia 529 has released an RFP for a third party administrator to launch a new Virginia 529 state facilitated automatic enrollment IRA program. Um, so it's, it's out and the, the due date is March 25th, 2022. Contract term will be no less than five years. So it'll obviously the, the longer, the better for most of the uh, program managers. So it's, it's great to see the, the longevity of that one and look forward to seeing how that one turns out. Um, and of course, once once they launch, that list of live programs will, will lengthen it. And we, we project, uh, as does everyone at this point, to that the number of live programs to, to lengthen. Um, moving over to the February February um, 7th, Colorado issued an RFP for a third-party administrator, same, same um, 
uh, services as well as, as the Virginia 529 uh, RFP. But this one will be the first multi-state auto IRA program out there because uh, Colorado issued that uh, in partnership with, with New Mexico. And the due, due date is currently set for March 22nd, 2022, um, which is great. 529 distribution trends. Uh, we'll, we'll do the, the live poll. Uh, Tara, please help me out in this one. We, we, um, we do a similar question for advisors and, and parents in our, in our annual survey. So um, what are the perceived issue for 529 plans for investors? And start to, to drip onto the next page, what we'll say is that the, we also ask for financial advisors. We ask the advisors what their perceived issues are of their clients. So, so we don't ask the advisors, what do you see the perceived issue? But what do you, based on your work with clients, what do you think the client's uh, um, hurdles are you know, for this one? And we'll give that one a moment as well. But in the meantime, we'll take a look at the um, responses, you know, from the advisors, which is the lack of, you know, product awareness is the number one um, hurdle as perceived, you know, for advisors. And therefore, it's so important for us to, to build awareness for 5 plans and the able accounts from that perspective as well. Now, now jumping over to the responses on, on the attendees today, 69% responded lack of awareness. Um, 30% negative impact on, on savings of financial aid scholarships, competing seven, uh, financial goals, savings goals was 45%, but lack of awareness was, was 70%. Um, so um, definitely the lines pretty close. Um, investment fees and performance 16% for respondents here today versus uh, Paul, uh, Paul, I'd mention one thing too, just as far as yep. like the lack of, like, you know, kind of the, the lack of awareness, right? I mean, that's something that we've, we've discussed as well too. And I'm not saying that NASDAQ is the, is the holy grail of being able to put, you know, to, to, to make 529s, you know, make investors more aware of 529s, but kind of going back to that validation point of, of being able to have a searchable symbol for these investment products, they, they, they make them more tangible, right? They make them more, more real for, for investors. And so, um, you know, we have heard from some that, you know, being able to actually search a symbol for a 529 makes it a lot more of a familiar product and the experience of being able to do due diligence and research. So, you know, that lack of product awareness is, it kind of, again, kind of validates why we're, why we're here and what we're trying to do from, from our perspective to bring, um, you know, to bring 529 29s kind of in, in, in more to the to the forefront of, of the investment options for for families looking to save. Sounds good. All right, I'll uh, I'll, I'll power through the slides. We'll, we'll hit some questions and uh, thank you so much for the um, update, Devin. It, it, well stated. You know the um, you know, in terms of just like you know that, that awareness and understanding. You know it's just important to build awareness, investment performance. Um, you know in terms of selection factors, seventy four uh, percent of of um, parents are selecting the plan based on of a performance, then low fees, then in state tax incentives, and then ease of ease of use. So it's a you know the, the performance is a, is a key driver. Key themes: inflation is is an issue, but tuition inflation is has something that is something that's always been there for quite a while. The uh, stable value is, is, a, is a big topic right now, just with all the market volatility, interest, increase in interest rates. That increase in interest rates will also in, improve, increase the importance of college financial planning, just because the, the, the negative side of, of loans will only increase. ESG uh, continues to grow. We saw a scholar share la launch their suite of, of options. Maryland 529 added, it will add an option in, in first quarter. Um, big, big picture trends, advisory shares continue to expand, employer channels important, gifting um, for a census uh, gift platform has surpassed over 2 billion in, in contributions, rewards will, will um, is a key item and, and 529 importance will increase as IRS removes income tax deductions for, for tuition and um, for tuition uh, and fees um, item, but so, so this is the um, Devin, please come back back on stage and uh, thank you so much. That's his phone number. Hit him up anytime. H have some follow calls and, and, and meetings. Uh, did you see any questions that, that you wanted uh, to to uh, pick up, Devin? Before we um, I I answered. I answered. I think um, there was there was a there was one in the chat that I answered uh, in the chat, and hopefully, um, uh, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. I don't think that there's anything else that uh, that I haven't. Uh, there was a question around why haven't more plans registered, um, and I think that you know. 
very quickly, I would say, you know, from a from a from a sales and business development perspective, um, this has been a priority of mine for the last 13 months. Um, and in, in that time, we were able to double the amount of state plans that we had registered on the platform, increasing the overall share classes by almost um, uh, 600 share classes last year. So um, there's a lot of momentum out there. Uh, there's a lot of you know, good discussions and a great pipeline uh, for 2022 that we're excited to not only execute on, but partner uh, in a meaningful way with, with uh, the different state plans that we continue to uh, work with and that we will work with in the future. So um, great question and, and happy to follow up with anyone if you'd like to uh, after the call. Sounds great. Th thank you so much, Devin. Any, uh, any, any, any final word? I, I know, I know, from my perspective, you know, the importance of performance is is just so critical to the long term success of of five T nines. Within with the projected increase in, in taxes, the value of, of tax advantage products will increase, and it's great to it's very refreshing to have Nasdaq reiterate the, the importance on, on on performance as opposed to having the industry you know focus on on things that um, you know such as as expenses and fees and, and as as is by by some of the other other providers, but also just to provide additional awareness and understanding as, as your team does such a great job blocking tackling the, the awareness uh, game and helping us as grow as an industry. So I, I appreciate all that, all that you do, Devin. Any, any final word that you have before we uh, depart for the day? No, no, I, I, I don't have very much. I, I appreciate the chance to be able to have the, uh, the chat here with you today, Paul, and you know, the partnership between NASDAQ and, and, and ISS market intelligence and the partnerships that we've been able to, uh, to, 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 to forge over the course of the last uh, year and, and the partnerships that will continue to uh, manifest over the, the, the coming year. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. And, uh, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Sounds great. And uh, Devin's a, a marathon runner. So, and as I said, Devin, this is this is a long game, a long marathon, not not wind sprints here. So I I appreciate the um your time and, and insight. Call Devin, have a call, meet and greet him. I, hopefully, we get to see each other in person in, in September. But I appreciate your, your time, Devin, and uh, and all the audience here today. Thank you so much. Awesome. And cheers to creating great. a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.